Hi everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyro Art for Beginners. We're continuing looking at the skull uh, pyrography art creation at the minute and looking to try and capture more depth and uh, volume with our art. So today's lesson is just a continuation from where we'd left off with the skull's eyes you know as we were obviously this needs to go much darker to push the back of the, this is really if you like the back of the skull so you know you you need to set this much darker to really push it back deep inside the skull but today i thought we'd have a look at the front of the skull I'm using my medium spear shader from the Optima at the minute and I've got my setting on about two and a half. So as we're looking at the shape of a skull, I've got the two images here that you can see. One of them being water damaged, but it's another. as we can see there is shape and shading, you know, that forms the skull, you know, to make it not look like a flat object. Obviously, your black and white shows you a tiny little bit of the shading, but your colour image shows you much more of the shading that is there. So what I generally tend to do is keep the heat setting low. So you've got control over the heat at all times, you know, so it's not getting away from you. And it, you're having to move faster and faster to keep up with this heat. You know, you dictate the pace and what is actually going into the wood. So that is a, that's a great tip for all the new pyrographers out there is turn your heat down to a level where you have full control over it and so let's try and see if we can see here on this eye let's try and see if we can set this part of the skull back and have this eye socket coming forward as we can see it's a lot skinnier on the actual image so because we burnt very low heat setting at the start we can make adjustments as we go you know we can tighten in on the eye itself that we just because we, if, if we'd have burnt really darkly and put a dark outline where we had it then that would have been set we wouldn't have been able to make any adjustments so that's another bonus of burning low and slow and as we see we've got cracks in the skull which have to go back there we can see there's little darker areas around where the cracks are so that can be another feature you can add is like say the skulls have a it's it's skull caved in if you like with a crack you know, and it's indented but let's focus on into this front eye socket and gradually build our way into a thinner bone at the front So we can use images as well just as like templates you know you don't have to copy them exactly to the letter you know you can use your own imagination at any point with any piece of art unless obviously you've been paid for a commission to look exactly like say an animal or a person then obviously you have to stick to the photo
So as we can see with the skull, this is its furthest point away and it's going to dome over. So what I personally would always try and do is build from the front and gradually work my way backwards to set everything back. A nice low heat and then we think about down here really is right there and touching now is really the far reaches of the back of the skull you know if you see it on its side on view this piece here really is it's right far back so we need to capture that depth by obviously darkening the darker something goes the further back you push it if it's sat next to something light it'll give the illusion that the lighter area is nearer to the eye Apologise to everybody who I work that I haven't carried on this series for a couple of weeks. We've had a family uh, emergency and I've had to spend a lot of time with a family member who's had a stroke. So there just hasn't been any time for me to do any filming or any artwork uh, for a couple of weeks but because I love gothic art but today we could actually try and make a video and carry on with this skull remember so this main piece of the eye we don't want to touch that at all, so we want to always be burning from the outside. Because remember, if, if we dis if you remember we discussed in an earlier lesson about heat bleed. If you are touching down three quarter tip or two thirds or even flat, you're going to get excess heat going into this area that you don't want to touch so we'll always come at it from the right angle you know that means moving your board around a lot and that's what you need to do is move your board here in these cracks of the skull <clears throat> and just add some darker areas for now go into some of the crevices and the cracks we could really go into real fine detail on cracks in skulls and you know really uh, make them look amazing if we want to get out of smaller tip pens so we're still not there yet with this front eye bone Stomach. 
then with the shading that I'm doing to try and make it look like this skull is more 3D I'm flicking the strokes in an angle around the skull follow the direction with pyrography pens in the direction you want them to show if I want to show a curve there's no good me burning flats or sideways burn with the curve excuse me I've got a hiccup then So always follow the direction that you're wanting to show and I'm going to leave that front eye socket as it is now so I'm going to find my rubber and just rub that bit of graphite there as you go along with your artwork as soon as you start rubbing out the transfer lines Things will appear differently to you. So again, I'm looking to try and give this skull depth. You know, right back here the furthest point there's a knot in my wood there so I'm just going to have to have a mole or something this for a hole in your skull Just work away for a few minutes, see what we can come up with. So this front bone also has some shading on it but I'm going to set that piece now by really darkening up around the edge of it to show that is front and there's something behind and there's a thing what we call blending with pyrography what basically what blending is is going from your darkest points and gradually lighter and lighter blending them out or you know going from dark to lighter back to dark and that creates the illusion then of something more 3D. See now I need to move the board around and remove the picture. Just put it to the side of me. Because now I I need to be working inside the skull at the back because the excess heat, I don't want it out there, I want, I want it in the skull. And on something, if you want to just do a, a very basic skull. You don't have to go into a tremendous amount of detail to make it look 
quite realistic. Just as we know this is the furthest regions. So on a frontal view, you're not going to see a lot of all this side piece of the skull. You're just going to get a glimpse of the side. The front on version is mainly really all about the eyes, the nose and the teeth. Before we got there, what to just give you a few little hints and tips about creating that depth. It may appear that I'm looks like I'm outlining. Wondering, I'm just slightly letting it seep inside of the skull, only very thinly, to try and set this darker tone at the back. find as well with pyrography you start off in one area all of a sudden you're off <laughs> somewhere else I think we all find that out we we set off thinking right we're gonna work on one area and all of a sudden before we know it we're off on a completely different part of the pyrography piece. But sometimes you do need to work different areas so it can all pull together so you can see the picture in your mind pulling together. To really set this bone sharper. That's what I mean setting it sharper is I want a real clean edge. So everything I'm touching down now is sat behind that clean front bone there then. We know all this skull is all working its way back and round. And I'm going to work from the furthest point inwards. And I'm just pulling the strokes hardly at all, but pulling them in, inwards in the direction that the shape is going. And I'm 
people with pyrography, with any art form, there's a lot of patience required. You know, with the burn low and slow method, we layer up, we, we keep building layers of heat, keep pushing the heat down into the wood. And that way it gives us these brilliant effects of something that is 3D. And there's some that's more, got dimension and depth to it. That is always our ultimate goal is to show depth. This is a part of the cheekbone running round the back. We're not going to get over complicated with it at the moment, we'll just put a light shading in there. But you could do this along all the back and as long as you remember where you are on the skull. So here you're on the sides so that's all circling round and then when you get to the top you would be coming over the dome so your strokes then would be flicking inwards with the top of the skull you don't want to go you don't want to burn like downwards like that otherwise it won't look right you just have to visualize that. that is the end of the horizon that you can see And everything will go much darker as you grow with confidence with a piece and you get in your mind's eye what you're trying to show So they're just very short strokes. I can keep my heat setting at just under two and a half because I'm building layers. Every time I go over and over, it will darken up more and more. But in a controlled manner, at the pace I want to darken it up, not at a pace the pen dictates to me. And I don't want to ruin the piece by cranking the heat up and showing you what would happen if we did that.
was a shame that notch right there in it when I transferred it out I didn't check this piece of wood for a knot it's right where I want to curve round Keep lightly following this direction back because it's, it's swinging round. There's a range of other pen tips available like if we really wanted to let's say do the cracks in the skull on the optima range he's got some micro skews and there's an extra small spear shader which gives you a much smaller tip to work with. This is where you need a steady hand because if you've set this front bone now you don't want to burn inside of it. Stay just on the outside edge with a steady hand. Just short strokes until you get further away. In the danger zone of not touching in there. Again, I'm going to move my board around because I want to come inwards again. Still pulling ever so slightly on the angle. Is I want to get a meeting point. I want the darker outside edge, and then I've got this darkness behind the eye. But I don't want it to go all dark. I want a little bit of separation. So I need dark, a little bit lighter, and then dark off in the distance. So it's all about trying to find the right, excuse me, tonal value, which is the right, the right shading. That in essence is the skill to pyrography is the right shade in the right direction. Everybody can create amazing pyrography art. It's just getting your head around how would it look? You know, if this skull was really sat in front of you, how can you show it on a flat piece of wood?
what I'll probably do in a few minutes because as I've given you some uh, basic tips there you know burn in the direction don't touch the danger zone that's warning keep out keep that light keep it so it looks like it's the front And then it takes time and a low heat to set the shape behind it. So what I'll probably do is I will switch you over to time lapse. So you know sat through me dabbing away. At this part of the skull to get the air. Uh, so I can slow the time lapse down when I upload the video so you'll still be able to see what I've been doing and we'll recap as well and once we get there to that point Hopefully already you can see that we're creating some depth just by the little we've done there. We've stayed tight to that front bone and everything is curling away. And the strokes are very short because there's not a lot of room here down the side so we're trying to cram what would it really be a much larger area to something much smaller Move my board again. It won't stay on the right side with my pen. Show this main eye socket front sitting forward. And even though this is still basic shading techniques, it's still more advanced. Uh, looking deeper into pyrography. You know, it's the work that goes in when you see these amazing skulls and stuff. It's the work that goes in behind the scenes.
so that they tiny the little nuances of that sort of it. Just until you find that perfect moment where you capture all the shading. In a perfect moment there'll be a place you reach with the pyrography when you're burning low and slowly. And it's the it's the way of giving yourself the best opportunity to see the it's the moment where suddenly everything you've done balances out and you've captured the shape perfectly. Now if you're 12, your heat on your pen's too high, you would fly by that moment. You have to be prepared and patient, prepared to just spend the time. If you want to create a really cool looking skull. And just take time. Enjoy the learning, that's what I do. I, I, every time I burn any subject, I look at it as a learning opportunity and I enjoy the process of learning. Possibly new things, new looks. And like my slogan says, every hour of burning is an hour of learning. It really is, you can just, you can get lost in your art for hours and hours. All of a sudden someone will shout and say, do you know it's four o'clock? And you've been sat there for five hours and you haven't realised because you've just gone so into the zone. Of just dabbing away and slowly building your effect. Time and everything just slips away from you. It's one of the magical things with art, you can just get lost in it. It's a great therapy for a lot of mental health conditions. I know a lot of uh, army veterans and stuff have found pyrography and they found it to be very therapeutic and help them with a PTSD it can help with depression anxiety as you just get lost in the art and all other thoughts just melt away Keep going over you to push this area deeper. Uh, 
I am flicking quickly there, but I am flicking my strokes in the direction still. It's just that I've got more control over my pens. Many hours of practice that I can flick quickly. Eventually you'll get to the point where the pen becomes an extension of your hand and your brain and you know you just get full control over the pen. start with you may feel uncomfortable and clumsy or whatever in your hand but the more you practice with them the steadier your hand will become I mean in real life if I were to take a photograph of something, my hands are so unsteady. They shake all over the place. I can't keep my hands steady enough to take a, a photograph. It'd be blurry, but yet with a pyrography pen in my hand, I can get a steady hand. From all the hours of practice, And just keep working on your light heat, just adding dabs in the direction until you feel you've captured a look you're happy with. I think we'll call this lesson setting the front eye socket. And hopefully already there, you can see the depth is beginning to show. Turn the board again. Close to the edge. You see, I mean, this is a repeat. How many times have you seen me do this in this, in this session? It's what I mean by layering up. You just go over and over. Go back there, set some more, and as you work, you'll have to adjust the back.
you can follow that on because this bone here is a part of the cheekbone. So just by adding that little dark touch, it already gives the illusion that You know, this bone isn't flat. Just by little dabs. Darkening in the right place. Moving your board round. So you can get into that tight corner there. So we're using the medium space header here. We could be could ideally use the extra small, but I can get away with the medium for this example. Now I want to show it really tight, this bone, because the bone is really got a clean edge. So there we have set the starting of the front eye socket and the skull blending off into the background behind so I hope some of that has made sense I know it doesn't look like we actually did a great deal of work but that is more advanced pyrography of building up layers of heat and then we really start building shape and depth. You know, it's, you're not going to create shape and depth in 10 minutes, unfortunately. Or maybe with all the millionaires, because it doesn't work like that. It takes hours and hours of careful shading to produce a really good looking skull so if you keep working away on your eye sockets there get to this point where you get a nice clean front bone you're starting showing the direction of the skull going off curling round And we'll revisit at another point of the skull a bit further on. But I, I shall leave it there for today, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope some of what I said or showed you today may help you with your own pyrography. Just have fun with it. Keep your heat nice and low. And just get lost in your art and just just take time and you will we'll create some magical art. So I'll, I'll catch you up after I've filled a bit more of the skull in and we will meet up again on these 
front bits around all the cheekbones and we'll do some shading of the actual you see all these shading points on the bones will start to create some shape to them also so i'll see you in the next lesson thank you for watching don't forget to hit subscribe or leave me a comment or a like you can join our facebook group which is called pyrography for beginners and beyond by flames pyro art and we run monthly competitions we have a great group of passionate pyrographers in there where we all share our work and we can ask questions and share ideas and new techniques and it's just a meeting place for people who have a passion for pyrography so you're welcome to join us there it's an open group just find us and you can enter and we welcome you aboard i'll leave a link to the facebook group at the end of this video and if you want to pop along you're more than welcome to okay thank you for watching today everybody i hope you all stay safe and take care and i shall see you in the next episode happy pyro wing everyone and i shall see you all soon bye for now Thank you.